Bible said laughter does the body and the soul do it. So it's all right to laugh every once life. in a while. Amen. Amen. I don't have my Kevin Hart on this morning, so I'm going to be all going to be quiet. <laughs> Amen. But uh, um, it's amazing that um, Mother Maddie said something this morning. I want to read, read something real quickly to you that came across my desk this week. And it said this, it's amazing how God will send the word at the right time. Amen. Amen. And it says, in this reset, hmm. it will not be church as usual. Mm -hmm. It will be church unusual. Right. Mm -hmm. We're transitioning from having church to becoming the church. Right. In full demonstration. Mm -hmm. Out with religion yeah. and in with kingdom. Mm -hmm. right. The shift is here. Yeah. And the only way that you can be included in the shift is if you shift with the movement. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So you, got to, you got to shift yeah. with the movement. So I like when it says no more church as usual, mm -hmm. but now it's church unusual. Yeah. And then we have to understand that the church is not the building. Amen. But the church is the occupants that come inside of the All building. Right. Amen. You yeah. tore up from the flow up, the building is still going to be the building. Yeah. I wish I had a witness. Yeah. Yeah. But the moment you make up your mind that you're going to live for God, yeah. and you're going to allow him to um, erect his church from within you, yeah. because at the end of the day, we must realize that it's his church and not ours. Right. And if he, raised, if he raises his church up in you, guess what happens? Mm -hmm. He can use you all the more to help advance right. his kingdom. Right. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, all of this time, they've been telling me who was getting married, and you know, I'd, I'd be having names, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And be smiling, don't be knowing who you're talking about. <laughs> but praise the Lord, I call him Funky Fingers over here. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. He going to have little Funky Finger Ets coming around here pretty soon. <laughs> So congratulations is in order to you, young man. Amen. You will be adopted into this thing called the ball and chain. All right. All right. Amen. 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 Uh, I'll tell you like my dad told me. He said, you the man. Yeah. And you can do anything you want to do. Yeah. As long as you get her permission. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm married long enough to know yes, I do whatever I want to do. Yes, as long as she says it's okay. Amen. <laughs> And at the end of the day, it's too cold to sleep outside. The, car, the couch gets a little bit uncomfortable. And the silent treatment is real quiet. So I'm, yes, ma'am, I'll pout when I ain't with her. But when she see me, I'm smiling. Okay, honey. Okay, honey. And I do it when she don't, when she, when she ain't looking. I do it anyway because, uh, hey, man, I know somebody going to tell her that and tell on me if I ain't doing it right. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to see everybody. It's good to see everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 I, amen. I was glad when God woke us up this morning to say, hey, get up. Yes. You got another opportunity. Amen. Get yourself together and let's amen. do something. Amen. Amen. Let's think about how many people did not wake up this morning. Hallelujah. Don't have a chance to do it all over again, but Amen. we do. Amen. And for that, I just want to say the simple little thing. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you. Oh. 
and he's still making the way. Amen. Amen. Meet me over in the book of 2 Samuel. Uh, I just want to share with you briefly. We're going to 2 Samuel chapter number 11. And while you're getting there, uh, Bible 40 is fine. Um, he's just lately, he says, he'll walk from here to the car. And he's extended, ex extremely windy. And so, oh, I hope I ain't got no COVID. I said, you ain't been nowhere. <laughs> and uh, COVID's scared to come around here because you fuss too much. So uh, he's just, uh, 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 he's, he's going to the doctor this week to make sure that everything is okay. But he's good, he's in good spirits. And in fact, he, he was like, he was coming. And then he called me uh, late last night. He said, I think I'm going to stay in. I'm just going to, you know, rest to make sure I'm, I'm okay. But he did send his love. Amen. Amen. Know that he is doing just fine. So, um, and I do want to share with you guys that when he was down and he got uh, the cards, and the phone calls, that just, that made his entire week. Amen. He talked about it probably for a week and a half. You know, they sent me cards. I got two of them. Man. And they called and said something, boy, I will sing again. Yeah. I told them, I said, well, you keep on singing. But they love them some of you. Amen. Amen. So meet me in 2 Samuel chapter 11 when you have the rest of your feet. And uh, I just kind of want to share something. It's amazing. God just put things in my spirit. And, you know, Mother Maddie touched on it while she was up and she was sharing with us this morning. She touched on some things. Um, that confirmed this word for this morning. Verse number, verse number one, it says, In the spring, when kings march out to war, I want y'all to remember that. I want y'all to remember that right there. Just, just remember that for me. In the spring, when kings marched out to war, David sent Joab with his officers and all of Israel. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbi. But David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed and strolled around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing, a very beautiful woman. So David sent someone to inquire about her. And he said, isn't this Bathsheba, daughter of uh, Elam and wife of Uriah, the Hittite? David sent messengers to get her, and when she came to him, he slept with her. Now she had just been purifying herself from her unclean, un unclean, unclean, cleanness. Afterward, she returned home. The woman conceived and sent word to inform David, I am pregnant. For a brief moment, I just want to use as a subject this morning. Your position mm. has the potential mm. to cause you to fall into sin. Right. Your potential, mm. your position has the potential to cause you to fall into sin. Have you seen? Mm -hmm. Father, thank you now. Speak clearly. Allow us to hear what you have to say to the church. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And it's amazing because um, it doesn't matter how sanctified you are. It doesn't matter how uh, much God uses you. It doesn't matter um, 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 how holy you become. It doesn't matter how many verses you know. Um, it doesn't matter how good you pray. It don't matter how good you sing. Okay. Um, the moment that you take your mind off of God, yes. the moment that you cause yourself to relax okay. is the moment that the enemy finds an opportunity okay. to begin yes. to push you yes. into a place. Yes. Uh, come on here, somebody. Yes. It's, it's amazing yes. because, see, listen, as Christians, sometimes we feel like this road and this, this, this journey is so hard that every once in a while we take a premature vacation. And when we take that premature vacation, Josh, what begins to happen is the Bible says that the enemy roams to and fro seeking who he may devour. And what I want you to understand is that the enemy, he watches your moves, especially those that he knows have enough power to recognize him and rebuke him and push him away. 
And what he'll tend to do is he'll tend to lurk around because he realizes and understands that even the most sanctified every once in a while will have a brief moment yeah. where he puts God down because of something that he felt he needed a break from. Yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while, it seems as if we'll wake up and say our prayers, we'll read our Bible during the day, but it seems like just one time every once in a while, mm -hmm. we want to go on a little brief vacation without the Lord, Amen. and that's the time that the enemy will be paying attention, mm -hmm. and then he'll flood your mind with things that he knew you would rebuke him for, yes. but when he catch you out of position, he'll put things in your mind, and then you'll begin to allow these things to fester in your mind, yes. simply because you got yourself off guard by making sure you put God down just for a brief minute. Yeah. I want you to understand that when you became saved, sanctified, and if you feel it or not, I don't know. That's between you and the Lord. Right. Yeah. But when you become yeah. saved and sanctified, baby, you've got to make sure that you can't put your armor down when you feel like right. you're going through a little bit. You've got to keep your armor on when it's good. you got to keep your armor on when it's bad. you got to keep your armor on when it's hot. you got to keep your armor on when it's cold. you got to keep that armor on when you're in the bathtub or when you're sitting down eating your chitlins, the ones that don't smell too good. you got to keep your armor on simply because the enemy is just waiting for the right opportunity for you to put one piece of armor down for him to slither his way in and begin to wreak havoc on your journey. I wish I had somebody praying with me right now. And so now what we find here, remember David was an awesome young man. David was somebody that was overlooked by his daddy. David was somebody that had an intimate relationship with God and he was in the field tending the flock. David was somebody that was selected by God to be the next king of Israel. David was the little man that killed the big giant. David was the one that was humble enough not to kill somebody that was yet trying to kill him because of his position in God. David was the one that God says was the man after his own heart. David was now the one who was standing in the position right now for him to go on vacation prematurely. What are you talking about, preacher? Well, we're looking at this first verse, and the first verse says, In the spring, when kings marched out to war, David sent Joab with his... Come on. David sent Joab with his... In other words, David sent somebody out in his position... Because he felt he needed a little vacation. Amen. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. This was a time of the year when all of the kings would go out with the army and they would go out and they would fight. Now, even though his army went out and was successful, I need you to understand that they that that that, that the hand of God moved off of David uh, uh, in a in, in a quickness simply because David misappropriated his position. Yeah. Long slither in and began to plant some yeah. seed. Yeah. Are, are you with me? Because what happened is, now, when David is supposed to be out, David decides he's going to kick back. When David is supposed to be on the battlefield, he's someplace with his, with his feet propped up. And now we find that the enemy is lurking around saying, oh, I got this booger right where I want him at now. Let's see how bad David is now. Because I need you to understand, when you walk away from God, you walk away from the hedge. You walk away from the strength. You walk away from the power. You put your anointing down for a few minutes, and all the enemy needs is just one second to get in there. And now you have to scramble to get back in line. So now listen. So here David, he, he sent his men out. But yet David was in the palace. Kick him back on vacation. Mm. Then it says one evening David got up from his bed and strolled up on the roof of the palace. And that's when he seen this prettiful woman. Mm. Amen. She was so prettiful. She had long, silky hair. Come on here, somebody, paint the picture. Yes, sir. And so listen, he wasn't in the right position. And so now the enemy positioned him someplace where he can find out that, yeah, you're still human. Hey, you are. He positioned him to allow him to know that, yeah, you can still sin and fall short of God's glory. Right. And I want you to know that my daddy, he's not here right now, but he would always tell me, he said, son, whatever you do, make sure you do what's right. Because he says, I don't care how good you've done and how many accolades you've received. 
see. He said one bad move can make a, can erase a thousand attaboys. And it does not make sense for you to accomplish a whole bunch. Make one mistake. And folks only remember the mistake and not the things that you've accomplished. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because now we're at a place now where the enemy now is toying with David simply because David had already, he had already successfully been a whole lot up until this point. And now he's in a position to where, 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 where he's moved outside of the parameters of God. He's moved outside of the will of God. He's moved outside of what the regular was for him in his position. And now the enemy does what? Urges him to go up on the roof. But isn't it amazing that at the time he urged him to go up on the roof was the time that this woman was on the other roof doing what she normally did. All right, all right, all right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ain't it funny how when when temptation meets opportunity, there's a head-on collision in the middle of the intersection. Yeah, yeah. And David's sitting up there looking, and he's looking over the roof. The, and you say, what are you talking about? He ain't had no business being up on the roof. He didn't, had he been at war, he wouldn't have seen her pitifulness in the first place because she didn't change her routine. He changed his. Yeah. And when you're not strong enough to understand that you can say, the, the, the Bible tells us that the lust of the eye gets us in trouble. Amen. But what does he tell us? He says, if our eyes cause us yeah. to lust, it's better for us to pluck that thing out. Right. Have I got a witness? Amen. But listen, when the enemy got you in a spot where it's just you and him, he can tell you anything. And when you're not in that good space, you're in that vulnerable space, he can fool hoodwink and bamboozle you to believe that you are right. Because David was looking over and I can only imagine Josh, the enemy, saying, she fine, ain't she? She look good, don't she? You the king. You know you got power, don't you? You can say a word and everything has to come. Uh, come on here, somebody. David, you you the man. You the man. Uh, Boris Kojo ain't got nothing on you. Interest ever ain't got nothing on you. He's David, David. You the man. You may not be buffing all that, but you got power because you the man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, 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 if David was fat, 700 pounds, the, the enemy was still told him, David, you find you the man. You can have anything you want. And at this moment, listen, now he, could, he, he, he confused him enough to make him what? Misappropriate his power. That's right. That's right. Have I got a witness? Yes, Lord. Because the Bible says that he looked over at her and now he became interested in what he saw. Yes, yes. Was he interested because she was pretty or was he interested because she was naked? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And now flesh has set in. Come on here. And now the enemy has told him you got enough power to have what you want no matter who it is. Amen. And I don't care what nobody say, he had to know who she was and whose wife she was because remember, he was the king. So now, he says, he sent out word to go get her and to bring him, listen, because when sin begins to set in, remember we was talking in Bible study just this past week, how when sin sets in, it starts off as a baby. Yeah. Yeah. And as sin begins to mature, it gets grown and it starts losing its cotton picking mind. Right. I wish I had a witness in here. Right. And so now David's sin started off real little. He started off what? Not being on the battlefield. <laughs> then it grew a little bit because now he's looking at something he ain't got no business looking at. Right. And now it's getting bigger because now he's calling for something that he know he ain't supposed to have. That's right. That's right. And now it's getting bigger because not only did he call for her to come, but she couldn't tell him no because he was the king. Yeah, come on, somebody. I want y'all to catch this. Yeah. And so now the enemy has told him, you got enough power to tell this other man's wife to come on in here and get in my bed. Uh -huh. And now, hey, look, my problem with it is this. If David was so much a, king, a man of God at this particular moment, why did not the inner man be strong enough to, to, to share with his spirit that, David, this ain't right? Because I need you to understand, but watch this. Watch this. David had already committed the sin when he thought about what he wanted to do even before he physically done it. What am I trying to say? Stop thinking that you have to physically commit the act for it to be a sin. 
the, the moment you let it entertain your mind, the moment you start thinking about it, the moment it keeps you up at night, the moment you start devising a plan, come on here somebody, the moment that it takes over everything that's going on with you, now you are operating fully in the sin that has the potential to cause you to be in sin and God will remove his hand if you don't recognize where you are, what you're doing. Oh, I wish I had a witness yeah, yeah. And so now, David, listen, the enemy, when your mind and your ears is clogged up, uh -huh. the enemy can tell you anything. Yeah. And when you're not listening to God, you're listening to something. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the enemy is steadily telling you. And it seems like the longer you stay in sin, the louder the voice of the enemy gets. Oh. And when the enemy's voice gets louder, it starts letting your flesh and everything line up to what he's saying yeah. because it makes sense. You see, sin feels good. So it makes sense when somebody's telling you what to do to make you feel good. I wish I had somebody. There's some tax men right now that's praying on some folk right now that you can come and bring your taxes to them because you're going to get about $78,000 back on your income tax. And they didn't even take that much out of your income tax in the last four years. But yet you're going to get a big income tax check. Somebody already looking at that car that you can't afford with your illegal income tax check because the enemy has told you, oh, you can do it. Ain't nobody looking. Ain't nobody going to see. But baby, man may not see, but God sees everything. Man may not know, but God knows everything. And I need you to know in the book of Judges, when it starts talking about the people that was loving their money, the Bible says that they can love their money, but God will allow holes to be in their money bag. And the more go in, the more come out. And at the end of the day, you'll be wondering where that seven or eight thousand dollar check went, and you ain't got nothing to show for it because you're not gonna make a mockery out of God. Call yourself a child of God and let the enemy entice you to do whatever. All right, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord. So we find that now David has slept with this woman. And not only have he slept with her, but now he's impregnated her. Amen. And isn't it amazing? Now listen. Listen to how this whole thing started off because him being out of position. Yes, yes. The whole thing started off with being home when you're supposed to be at work. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah. So whoever thinking about calling off tomorrow, don't call off. Yeah. <laughs> Call to <the> work. <laughs> Your PTO may not wind up being as good paid time off as you need it to be. All right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, we hear somebody. So, so the first thing was, David took the day off mm. inappropriately. Mm. The second thing was, he allowed himself to be in a position. And I want, I'm willing to believe, this is just my own perception, I'm willing to believe that he knew she was going to be up there. Amen. I'm willing to believe. Because I'm not, I'm not going to just... Why did I walk out in my backyard? All right, all right. All right now. Why did I go sit out on the front porch and have me a glass of lemonade? All right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why did I have to go up on the roof? Yes, sir. <laughs> because back in those days, you got to understand that they didn't have hot and cold running water. Yes, sir. So on the roof were, were, were places where people can do their thing and spend their time and be quiet. And listen to me. If Uriah was in his army, he had to know that Uriah had himself a boot thing. Yeah, and he had to know where Uriah and his boot thing lived. Right. Come on here, I'm just, this is just me. I, I don't want y'all to say, oh, he said, I'm going to find it in the Bible where he said, no, no, I'm telling you, this is what, this is what my revelation is. It may not be right, but this is what my revelation is. Praise the Lord. And, 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 and he had to know because at this particular time, he's on the roof. And isn't it not just a coincidence that when I get up on the roof, she in the bathtub? Amen. On the roof? Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then I look over and I see her. Then the next thing happens is, if it's Uriah's wife and Uriah's one of my men, I've seen her before. Yeah. But why she looks so much gooder now? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> she looks gooder now because Uriah ain't there. Mm. And because I ain't supposed to have her. Mm. See, I want to help somebody right here. Some of the stuff that you're supposed to have is the stuff that looked the best to you. Amen. Come on here, somebody. <laughs> I want somebody to hear. Some of the stuff that you're not supposed to have is some of the stuff that looks the best to you. Yeah. 
Have I got a witness? Let me see the hands of anybody in here that don't like a Bentley. And when you see that Bentley rolling down the street looking all clean and glistening, I, you may not be a Bentley person, but when it looks good, how many of y'all look and say, ooh, that car sure look good? Huh? Huh? You see what she said? She said it costs too much. That don't stop people from believing. I know somebody that bought a Bentley living in an apartment and, and, and mad asking that we have AAA when it broke down. Hallelujah. I said, you didn't buy the warranty, the, the extra package that, that Bentley come and pick up the car when something go. You need AAA? Right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Brother, two things wrong with that. It should be parked in a garage yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. for a house that you purchased yes, sir. Yes, sir. because if your family costs more than your rent, right. you misappropriate and trying to floss and be something that you're not. Right. Come on here, somebody. And when your appetite supersedes what your ability is to maintain it, you will allow the enemy to mess you up mm. if you don't ask God to be Build a fence all around me every day, God. Be my footsteps. Show me what you want me to do. Let me stay in your will because I don't want to miss heaven trying to fulfill the desire. And David looking out. Remember, he, he, he now he's got himself in a bad situation. And the Bible says over in Isaiah 59 and 2, he says, but your iniquities have made a special a, a separation between you and your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you, so he does not hear. And for a time, while David was in his sin, he couldn't talk to God because he was so disconnected, nor was he able to hear from God because he was so flooded with the desires of his flesh. And now he sleeps with her and he gets her pregnant. And now once he finds out that she's pregnant, he goes on and calls her husband off the battlefield. So now he goes from what? He goes from disobedience. He goes to manipulation. He goes to adultery. And now he's getting ready to go to trickery. What do you mean? Because he called Uriah off the battlefield. And then he told Uriah, he said, Uriah, go on home, man, and relax for a little while. You, you've been working hard. Brother, he told him, he said, listen, I... I want you to go and tell Bathsheba to make you some college greens or some candy to the yams or some hot water to the cornbread. Tell her to make you some fried and baked chicken. Tell her, tell her to make sure you got some peach cobbler with some good old vanilla ice cream. Make, make sure that after she finishes, she rubs your feet and runs you a bath. And when you're done with that, make sure you make love to your wife. Make sure she knows how much you love her. And now what is he trying to do? He's trying to make Uriah sleep with her so that he can pass off of his sin and make it seem I need you to know something. Right. When you sin before God, there is no covering up because you can throw dirt on it, but God will send the wind to blow the dirt off of it. And everything that's done in the dark will eventually come to light if you continue on to live. But I need you to know something here that when you get it made up in your mind that for God you'll live and for God you'll die, even though you sin, your spirit should be able to convince you and say, you know what, I've sinned and fallen short of God's glory, but God says I can repent and turn from my way and he's faithful enough to forgive me. I may have to suffer but I don't have to suffer the way I would if I hadn't got God to forgive me. Listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uriah displayed more faithfulness to David uh -huh. than David displayed to God. That's right. Uriah told him we had a battle with the brother. Uh -huh. My boo thing understand. Mm -hmm. But she also realizes that if I allow for myself to sleep with my wife, which is okay because that's my wife, yeah. it has the potential now to pull me from my mental state of battle yes, sir. to a last position to where now if I go back on the field after this, now my distraction is yeah. my time with my wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on here, I'm, I'm talking to some married folk. I don't want you unmarried folk to be thinking that. I don't want y'all thinking. <laughs> Praise the Lord. These people be sitting up and saying, Pastor was telling folk, it's okay for them to think about their fornicated acts that they make. No, I didn't. I said, married folk, if you married, you know how you feel thinking about 
your significant other. You know how they make you feel when they touch your hand or they kiss you on your cheek or they tell you how much you're, and you can be out at work and you'll be daydreaming because you reminisce about the thing that make you feel right. so good. Yes, yes. And therefore Uriah allowed him to know, he says, no, when we finish this battle, then I can come home mm -hmm. and be with my wife. Right. So he went home, mm. but he didn't sleep with her. Amen. The amazing thing, I can only imagine Bathsheba thinking to herself, I sure hope you don't sleep with me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because now we find who is the victim. That's right. The victim is your, it, it, it's not only Uriah, but the victim is also Bathsheba. Because now, listen, Bathsheba has to sit and look at her husband and not be able to say anything, knowing that she was in violation, and she wasn't in violation because she wanted to, but she was in violation because the king had commanded that to happen. And so now she has to live in the fact that now, listen, in these days, she could have easily said, David raped me, and the popos would have came and got David for rape. Because at this point, she could have said anything she wanted. But in those days, David was the king, so he was the popo. So David could say what he wanted to say and do what he wanted to do. And everybody had to fall subject to what he said because he was the one in authority. So therefore, she had to do it and couldn't say nothing. But I need you to know that when you are doing what God tells you to do, you ain't got to say it because God will make sure it's safe. That's why I tell folks, when God says vengeance is mine, don't go and try to get revenge on nobody. Don't go and try to make somebody feel as bad as they make you feel. Don't go and try to slander their name. But hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle. Keep your head up and let the love of God show from your heart. Because in the end time, God says he'll make your enemies your footstool. He'll cause your enemy to open up doors and bless you in a way that they never thought that they could bless you. But you've got to know that God is in control and not you. And know at the end of the day that God's will will be done. Amen. All right, all right. So now we find mm. Uriah goes on. He says, yeah, David, I, I went on home. He said, but I need you to know something. She looked good, but I, I, I want an assignment. Amen. And when you're focused enough to say no matter what stands in front of me, I'm committed to fulfill my assignment. I want to put a pin right there. Because I need to let somebody know something. When you're on assignment, distractions are going to come. When you're on assignment, attacks are going to come. When you're on an assignment, you're going to feel like you want to give up. When you're on an assignment, the heat is going to be turned up. When you're on an assignment, it's going to look like everything is going wrong. When you're on an assignment, it's going to look like your friends are starting to forsake you. When you're on an assignment, it's going to seem like no matter how many days you have, you got more bad looking days than you have good days. But I come by to tell you that the Bible says that the tests and the trials come to make you strong. And all you got to do is dig your heels in and say, I don't care how bad it gets. I got an assignment that I got to fulfill and I got to finish. And until God says that I'm done, I'm going to hang on in there. I'm listen to me. I'm going to tell God, yes, you told me that your burden is light and your yoke is easy. I need you to take this thing off of me for about 10 or 15 or 20 minutes so that I can gather my spiritual thoughts, God. But no matter what goes on, I am committed, Josh. I'm going to walk this thing out until you say to stop. I'm going to walk it out. Until you call me home, because my assignment is for the benefit of heaven and not for the benefit of man. All right, all right, all right. I wish I had some assignment yeah, people up in here yeah, yeah. that understand that no matter what I go through, uh, I need you to know that when pressure comes, uh, pressure is intended to break you. But God is that He makes us like pressure cookers. I wish I had a witness. I feel this thing right here. God makes us like pressure cookers, and if you can call on His name. You know when pressure gets too built up in the cooker, you turn the little knob and it begins to release the pressure. Oh my goodness. And when the pressure gets released, the thing that's on the inside that's been cooking under pressure, now that stuff is done and it's done quickly. And I need you to know when you need some peace and you're under pressure, you just need to ask God to release some of the pressure and let him do it. Because remember last week we said we are built to last. And it don't matter I'm under. I still got a capacity that I have to stand under before anything can break me. And since I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, I'm not made to be broken. 
Uh, I wish I had a witness in here. But I've got to, I've got, I've got to resist the devil so that he can flee because when he sees an opportunity and he understands that you're in line for a blessing. Can I preach a little bit? I, 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 my goodness, my goodness. When, 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 the, when the enemy can see that there's something on you that has the potential to destroy his kingdom and to wreck his plan. What the enemy will do, he'll begin to taunt you and place things all around you that will cause you to take your eyes off the king. But I come by to tell somebody that when you can say my mind is made up and that my heart is fixed, that I Get on 
lesson learned. Realizing my position wasn't in the right position. And my condition caused my baby to die. What am I trying to say? Yeah, the punishment might not hit you. Death might not hit you. But punishment is coming somewhere to something connected to you. Some of us have stepped over the line of temptation. 
but you're still here. You're still with your hands high. You're still with your praise loud. And I need you to understand that God could have cut you off. But because you had enough sense to ask him for forgiveness, you're still here. You still have a chance. You still can tell somebody, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I should have been dead and some of the sin that I committed. But because of grace and because of mercy, I'm still here. And his light still shines. And his hand is still on me. Have I got a witness in here? Can somebody help me say, thank you, Jesus, for saving my life. Thank you, Jesus, for not killing me in my sin. Thank you, Jesus, for helping me to forgive. Thank you, Jesus, for helping me to love. here. I just saw him stand up though and tell me, okay, you better stop. Amen. You. Him and my wife, they, get, they scare me. They, they, they tell you, you preaching, you preaching too much. Stop. You preaching too hard. Stop. And he ain't here, but I see him looking at me. <laughs> Amen. And that ain't the fear of my daddy. That's the fear of the Lord coming through my daddy. Come on, I want somebody. I want, I want, come on, say amen. Amen. I need you to know something. Sin is privy to everybody. Amen. The difference in us and sinners is we know how to use grace Amen. and not abuse grace. Amen. Listen to me. Josh, there used to be days where we'd be in the middle of some sin and we know the trouble is coming, the punishment is coming. And we say, God, if you get me out of this one, <laughs> Come on, I know about six people in here right now that said that. Yes, sir. Yeah, Josh, somebody said it last week, this morning, on their way to church. Lord, you get me out of this one. Yes, Come on here. Yes, and as soon as he get us out, we go right back in again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after all of these years, mm -hmm. and we see that the way the world is in, mm -hmm. the condition the world is in right yes. now, God, I could have taken you out a long time ago. Yes, but since he left you here, there's got to be a reason why you're still here. Yes, Which means that your assignment is bigger than the life that you lived up until now. Amen. Watch this. It's never too late to start your assignment. It's never too late to ask for forgiveness until yes, yes, God yes. allowed you to open your eyes to close for the final time. Yes, Lord. Mother Maddie mentioned, she said, there shouldn't be a bench member in this church. Amen. Because the Bible declares that we've got to work while it's day. Amen. And listen to me. God doesn't care about how good of a Christian you are. Amen. And all you did was came to church and said amen. Amen. But he is looking on how you helped advance the kingdom. Yes. Yes. And being a Christian is more than coming to church on Sunday and coming to church on Sunday. But being a Christian is being used by God to the capacity by which God desires to use you. And can I share this one thing? And I'm talking to me, and if this fits you, then great. We have to stop looking at what our own self-ingenuity is. And understand that when we put what God has for us in his hands... It don't matter what it looked like on the outside. He's already spiritually designed and predestined how it's going to be. Amen. Have I got a witness? Yeah. Yeah. If we have a will, God will make a way. Yeah. <clears throat> if you have a will to be forgiven, God will make a way for you to be forgiven. Yeah. If you have a will to be used by God, God will make a way for you to be used. But you've got to present him something to work with. Yes, hallelujah. Have I got a witness? Hallelujah. If you have a plan, he'll make it a program. Amen. Amen. If you have a building, he'll erect the church. Amen. When I do weddings, I'll tell the man, if 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 you bring home the bacon, the wife will make you a meal. Amen. 
If you plant your seed, she'll give you a family. But it takes you to give something to him for you to get something Amen. from him. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. And I think I shared with you from the time, the first day I got here, that God has something greater in store, individually and collectively. But if we don't line ourselves up with what his will is, we'll miss those things that he has for us. And I want you to look around, because I shared this the first time I was here as well. For every empty seat you see, Stop looking at it as being an empty building. Stop looking at every empty seat as housing an angel. Amen. And if you can welcome in the angel and make the angel feel loved, the angel can replace his seat with a physical seat. Amen. But if we can't do it the way he wants it to be done, he'll never replace it with the things that we desire. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. I say all that to say this. God loves you. He loves us. I love you. I love us. Amen. And I know God has great things in store. Mother Maddie asked if there's anybody that has it all against her or anybody else. Don't let this day go by without bringing it to me. Because forgiveness can never be extended if the person never realized that they offended. Yeah. Amen. And if you don't accept forgiveness, it's not on the person that accepted the forgiveness any longer. And if your eyes close today, know that you're free from all unrighteousness. Yes. Yes. So if there's anyone in this building before you leave here today, you go to your brother in love share with them so that they can share with you mm. and bury the hatchet today. Amen. 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 So I, Amen. Lights, you offended me because you didn't blink when I turned you off. Amen. The lights say well, nobody turned off the switch. Yes, yes. So we good now. Be the light yes, in a better place. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. And this is what allows the Spirit of God to freely flow when the church is on one accord. Yes. Amen. 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 With all heads bowed and all eyes closed, Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to share. And now we come to a place where there may be someone who don't know you for the pardon of their sins or may need to rededicate their life. So God, we take this moment now to extend that opportunity to them. If if you are here and you want to rededicate your life or give your life to Christ for the first time, just simply raise your hand. Amen. Amen. And then if you want to become a member of Cedar Grove or Cornerstone, Amen. both churches are here. Yes. Just raise your hand where you are. And then if there's anyone here that may just need some prayer, while we are in the assembly of the people, and we can touch and agree and pray on your behalf. If that is you, just raise your hands. Now I need a little extra prayer. Amen. Let us come together in prayer on behalf of Mother Maddie. Father, we thank you now. We lift Mother Maddie up to you now. Yes, Lord. Father, for as heaven has seen, has saw that her hands have been lifted in the request for prayer, yes. even before we seek your face. On behalf of her, we know that you already know what she stands in need of. And we know, oh God, that you already have the resolution and the answers to the thing that she seeks. So as we come together, God, on one accord, your word declares that the fervent effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much. And I know that the righteous is among us right now. So God, we lift up her prayer request to the heavens. We lift it up and we place it in the palm of your hand. We also place it down, Father, at the foot of the cross. We ask you, oh God, not only do you uh, fix it the way that uh, it needs to be fixed, but fix it better than her imagination yes. can even wrap around or fathom that it would be. Yes. Give her what she needs, Father God, to continue to go on and press into all that you have for her. Yes. I ask now that you touch her body from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Strengthen those areas that are weakened. Yes. 
Father, we ask you to just mend those areas that are painful right now, subside the pain. Then as we ask you to just strengthen, not only strengthen, God, but we ask you to just allow the blood flow to flow like it's never flown before. Yes. That she'll have a burst of energy in you that she's never had before. Yes. And that she'll sing praises unto your name like she's never sang before. Yes. Knowing, Father God, that your hand of mercy and grace is still resting upon her. Yes. And we thank you now. We ask you that you touch her mind and let her continue to think your thoughts. Yes. And continue to do, Father God, what you would have for her to do. Touch her ears that she may be able to hear sensitively from you. Then touch her heart, God, that a double dose of your love begins to pour from her like never before. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, for all that you've done in her life and all that you have yet to do. We thank you for letting her continue to be the matriarch of this ministry. And we ask you to bless her for her efforts. And bless her, Father God, in the city and in the field. And her coming and her going. And we thank you and give your name praise. Honor and glory. And we ask you, God, for every unspoken prayer request. That you meet them at their need. And you answer their prayers too. And we give your name, praise, honor, and glory for it now. It is in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ that we all pray and agree. And we say amen. Amen. And amen.